side mounts. What's up divers? Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about side mount harness setup. So let's get to it. Welcome to our channel, Asul Unlimited, where we teach all things scuba diving. Sarah here today, and I wanted to talk about this subject because I get a lot of questions about it, and I feel like, honestly, there's not a lot of people who teach side mount who are tiny. Tiny? So I wanted to give some pointers and some perspective to fitting a side mount harness to a lot of different body types. I always recommend when you get a side mount harness that you book time with a side mount instructor or someone who has experience with fitting the harness so that they can really help you to get it perfectly like tuned into your body. I have set up my own personal equipment many many times based on you know changing it because of wetsuits that I'm wearing or losing or gaining weight and let me tell you doing it by yourself you can totally do it but it's a pain in the ass sometimes. Especially in the beginning when you don't really understand where things are supposed to go. You just lose your mind trying to get the tanks where they're supposed to be and everything just in perfect alignment. Side mount harnesses are supposed to fit you like a glove. So it's really nice to have someone to help you get it just perfectly. Today I'm gonna to be working with the Razor side mount harness. Not sponsored. There are a lot of different brands out there to choose from. I personally dive with Razor, so that's the one that I'm going to be showing you guys today. Feel free if you have another brand and you have a question about it, just ask me in the comments below. I've also worked with and been diving on XD, on Hollis harnesses. You know, they're all great options. Cool, so let's talk about it. Side mount is really interesting because the equipment is very basic, but at the same same time perfectly made. All right, so the side mount harness is actually primarily made up of two pieces of webbing. It's sort of crazy when you look at it because it looks very complicated, but realistically, if you look closely at any side mount harness, you'll notice that the shoulder straps turn into the waist belt. Okay, so that's all one connected piece there, which is connected to the other side and the other waist belt. Then the spine here at the back is one long piece that connects to the crotch strap. So again, it's a very simple piece of equipment, two pieces of webbing, but then you have the hardware, which are these metal pieces, and especially like this one. Let's see if you can see it. Okay, that's the back plate, which I have a weight attached to. <laughs> so those are the pieces that help bring the webbing together into a coherent harness. And then we also have pieces of hardware that allow us to clip things on. That includes our tanks, our accessories. If we have a butt pouch, a lot of us dive with a little butt pouch for our accessories, SMBs, reels, knives, all of those things. Uh, you're gonna want to have hardware on your harness that allows you to clip things, clip, clip things on. So that's what we've got uh, with the harness. Then we have this piece at the back, which is the bladder. Okay, this is really important for us, obviously, because we need buoyancy when we go diving. <laughs> Yay! All right, so the way that I start my fittings for side mount are to figure out the length of the torso of the person that I'm fitting. So that is primarily with the spine piece of webbing on the harness. Okay, this is really important because when you have the spine set, then you can really start manipulating for the broadness of the shoulders, for width, right, the girth of our bellies, but you wanna have that base of understanding the length of the spine. Just a little disclaimer, I'm just one side mount instructor, and all of us have our own personal preferences and things that we like about side mount harness setup, 
So, you know, this is all just from my perspective and the things that have worked for me, okay? I always put that disclaimer in there because especially side mount divers are very, very picky. <laughs> We're a picky bunch. So, you know, if you try some of these tips out and you fit your harness and you're just not quite with it, I mean, keep trying stuff. Keep learning from other people and figure out something that works for you. This next point, I may vary a bit from other side mount instructors and that's about the point or the position of this low back back plate. If my diver is petite like me, that means that they have a short torso. So that means, you know, from, from here down to the crotch, if that area is short, I make a different choice about the position of that low back plate. What I do is I position it so that it's actually sitting a lot lower on the back, which makes our waist belt, right, that the part that comes around our body, actually more of a hip belt, okay? The reason why I do that is because my tank setup that I have, I use the same exact tank setup as my partner who is 6'1 or something. So we do not change the way that our bands are on our tanks that we can just swap from one to the other. And so the difference in length and height is made up by that position of the waist belt. I hope that that made sense. <laughs> so basically if I have a shorter person, I'm gonna move this piece lower, right? So extend that space from the shoulder plate to the low back. I'm gonna extend that area a little bit. All right, with this particular harness, uh, you really have to take into account the crotch strap at the same time because in this particular harness, the crotch strap is sewn at the bottom. Okay, so that means that I'm not able to take off length at this point unless I wanted to cut the sewn part, which I, I didn't want to do. So the place where I was cutting fabric or that I would cut fabric if I was fitting this to someone is from this spot at the connection with the shoulder plate. Okay, so that means that I would have to set up the spine making sure that this crotch strap fit just right. So if it's a tall person, that would be the positioning would be right around the belly button for that, that spot. Like basically it goes in between your legs and this little loop should come up to your belly button. And if it's a shorty like me, then I would bring that down to more of the pubic bone. Okay. So you need to have that kind of sorted out as you're setting up the spine, just because of that limitation with this piece. There are a lot of harnesses that you can actually adjust here at the crotch strap. So you don't even need to think about that when you're setting up the spine. So that's just a particular of the way that this is put together. When you're doing your own harness, you really need to make sure that you set up your harness correctly, but then not be afraid to cut webbing. A lot of these harnesses are made with just so much webbing, it's crazy. And it's made for you to cut, okay? These harnesses are made for you to stick with. I mean, when I set this one up, I left a little bit of wiggle room so that if I do decide in the future that I wanna sell it, that I could still sell it to someone you know, who's a little bit bigger than me, but you don't wanna be diving side mount with a bunch of extra webbing all over the place because it's just gonna drive you crazy and possibly be an entanglement issue. All right, so next up on the setup, once you have that spine perfectly measured, we go into the shoulders. The arm bone connected to the shoulder bone, the shoulder bone connected to the back bone. Okay, remember the shoulders are connected to the waistband. I don't even worry about the hardware on the waistband until I get everything else set up. The big thing here is that you make sure that the harness fits on the shoulders and that it's comfortable, but you want it to be snug. So there shouldn't be like a bunch of extra space in between the shoulders and the harness. It should be snug. Now, if you're fitting this harness when a person is in their street clothes and you know that they're gonna be wearing a thick wetsuit, then you wanna leave space, obviously, because they're gonna be wearing that wetsuit when they go diving. That's why I always do a dry fitting. And then the confined water portion of the side mount course 
we spend a lot of time making notes and adjustments to the harness. Once you have the shoulders comfortably fitted, then you can move the hardware here at the, basically at the armpit level. Okay, they're gonna be right, right around the armpits. So you can move those into place and then you can get into the waistband. The waistband, it depends on what, what brand you have, what kind of hardware you're gonna have on the razor here. I have these, that's to clip on my accessories pouch. So I wanna have those at the back on either side of this uh, low back plate so that I can easily clip, you see that? My pouch too, okay? So that's the goal is that they just hang down right over your butt, <laughs> which is why I, I typically call this thing a butt flap. <laughs> Charming, I know. So those, that's a pretty easy one to set up. You just wanna make sure that they are equidistant from each other and that you can clip the accessories pouch easily. Then we're gonna have the D-rings and these are for the tanks. So you have two of them on the razor. On other brands, you may have one that um, is fixed and then another one that moves. Those are, they're nice, but they can also be really challenging for the new side mount diver. When you have just fixed ones, it's a little bit of a pain to get them set up perfectly in the beginning, but then once you get used to it and you know how to dive with it that way, it stays there always and it's gonna be perfect for you always. The ones that move, you are responsible for understanding when that tank is starting to float to move it down. You may not always get the perfect position every single time. So, you know, it's a personal preference. I know lots of people that love them, lots of people that hate them. You can test it out and see what you like. With the waistband, with these ones, we have the two positions because when we're diving, a full tank is gonna be very heavy, right? So you're gonna wanna clip it on the D-ring that is further back, right? Closer to your spine than to your pubic bone, closer back because it's heavy and it's gonna hang low. The goal with this is to always have our tanks in line with our legs, okay? That's the goal. So when it's Full, it's heavy we're gonna clip it on that back point then when it's light and it's floating we're gonna move it to the closer point okay that means that it's gonna float a little bit and hopefully be in line with your leg once again when I do this setup dry I always just kind of eyeball it and then I make adjustments once I see the diver and how things are fitting okay so let me put this on even though I'm not in my wetsuit just so you guys can get an idea of where these D-ring positions are supposed to be. The most comfortable part of the process, the crotch strap. Okay, so once again, I talked about, um, you know, making sure to fit these things for having a wetsuit on. The D-rings are not perfectly in position because I'm not wearing my wetsuit. Okay, so that's something that you have to kind of eyeball and just figure out, especially the first few times you do it. It's a little bit hard to sort of judge where it needs to be based on what kind of wetsuit your student is gonna be using or that you're gonna be using. But, you know, that's what the confined water session is for, for the side mount course. It's to really fine tune this position, okay? The rest of it should be more or less good, but the position of the tanks can move, you know, can need some adjustment quite, a, quite often. Basically, you wanna make sure that these D-rings are even on the body, okay? So you wanna make sure that they are hitting like the same points on either side. The, the back ones, right? The ones where we connect the tanks when they're full, and then the uh, front ones where we connect the tanks when they are empty. I've got one giant D-ring here. I do not recommend this, okay? This is a quarantine fix that I have just put together because we literally can't get our hands on small D-rings at the moment. The reason why there are different size D-rings is uh, based on cold water versus warm water. In warm water, when we do warm water diving in side mount, we usually don't have to wear gloves. So it's easy for us to clip on and clip off our tanks because we don't have the restrictions of gloves. 
when you put gloves on, I don't know if you've ever tried to use one of these stupid clips. They are so hard to maneuver. So, you know, side mount divers, they're not dumb. We have put together different kinds of equipment to make it easier to make those clipping connections. That was just a little side note. <laughs> Quarantine, you guys. <laughs> it's been real. Cool, so typically when I'm fitting this part of the harness, the D-rings, I make sure that I have one set basically on the outside of the hip bone. So that's the, the front like main point of my hip bone there. It's just a little bit further back, okay? From experience, that seems to be a good, a good spot for it. And then for the inner one, it's basically just on the sides, outsides of the pubic bone. Uh, you'll notice that with my harness, I have this quite low, right? This, um, the hip belt, it's really very much a hip belt, okay? And that's because I'm short. Again, if I were fitting someone like Itor, I would have this part up here at my waist. I'm gonna get out of this because it feels real weird to be in this in shorts and no wetsuit, so just a second. All right, thank God. <laughs> okay, the next thing that we need to set up for our harness is the bungee, which we're gonna use to wrap around the tanks, around the neck of the tank. On the Razor and on several other harnesses, it's actually quite a simple setup because it is just one long bungee, okay? I personally like the simplicity of this system because when you put the tanks on, they automatically balance each other out. And then if you choose to go with just one tank, you can just unclip the one side and cross it over and that'll keep that one tank close to your body. To set up the length for this bungee, the way that I've been taught how to do it is by bringing it through, so you can see that it's, hopefully you can see this, that it's through this little uh, spot in between the shoulder plate and this little holder, okay? So I just bring that bungee through. So basically I take these clips off, I wrap them, so it's gonna go cross and clip. For the right amount of tension, it should be uncomfortable. It should be quite tight, okay? I should, like right here, it's it's squeezing me so much that I can, I can feel that pressure every time I breathe, okay? It's not a perfect system in setting it up, but it'll give you a good idea of the length that you're gonna need so that it hugs the tanks perfectly to your body. Then when you're done with this, when you've adjusted, you figured out how much of the bungee uh, you need to cut off, uh, then you can return them to the original positions. And you're gonna be working with this bungee. You wrap your first tank around and when you have that tank on, it's going to be really loose, right? Because it's connected to this side and you don't have that the other side on yet. It's gonna be quite loose. But then when you get your other tank on and you wrap, it shouldn't be easy to wrap the second one around the valve stem. It should be something that you have to pull and then maybe pull a little bit of extra slack and then get it around. It should be a nice snug fit to your chest. If you're not quite sure how to set up your equipment or how to get off of a boat, boat exit, boat entry, I do have a video for that. You can check that out in the description below. Some of the brands have them set up so that it is two individual systems. That means that you have one bungee set up for the right side and one bungee set up for the left side. So it, again, it's a personal preference thing. It's not that big of a deal either way. Another thing that I haven't talked about is the fit of the wing or the bladder, okay? It's a really simple one. It's all of them pretty much are connected around your belly by a bungee. So you just wanna make sure that you cut the bungee on either side so that it will fit snugly around your body because you want the bladder to really hug your back instead of being like poofy 
off to the sides. Finally, when you're doing setup, you're generally gonna need to add some weight to your harness. When I go through this process with students, I take weights with me to the confined water session and we figure out if with full tanks, how their, their buoyancy is. So they do a hover, I see if their legs are floaty or if their torso is, flo is floaty and we kind of check out where we can put weights and make that trim totally perfect because you want to be completely horizontal and be comfortable just holding that position the whole time. Then towards the end of the session, we empty the tanks so that we can do the same thing. We can see how their buoyancy is, how their position is, and maybe we need to add more weight because, you know, having two empty tanks on your body, you're more than likely going to need more weight. When you're looking at that, you can check out position by placing the weights, you know, on their low back. You can have them hold the weight in different positions. If they're kind of floating a little bit off on one side, you know, maybe to the side, you know, you can play around with that and see what position of the weights make perfect trim for the diver. Then when you get out of the water, you can make the adjustments that you need to make to the D-rings or whatever, and then add those weights to the harness. You can do that either with zip ties or in weight pockets that are detachable from the harness, again, depending on what kind of setup you are working with. Some harnesses like the newer Razor, it actually has built-in spots along the bladder to be able to add weights there. It's really useful if you're diving cold water, if you need a lot of weight on your harness, you can really distribute that weight quite well. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it. I hope that this was helpful and that you're able to use these tips to maybe make some small adjustments to your harness or if you're just getting into side mount diving, maybe it'll encourage you to uh, connect with someone who has more experience, who can help you. The goal that I want with this is that we have more people diving in side mount because it's a lot of fun, it's a cool crew to be a part of, and it opens up diving to more people that maybe can't carry a tank on their back whenever they go diving. It's just a nice way that diving has become more flexible for people with different limitations or different desires for their diving experience. If you have any more questions about harness setup or anything else, just let me know in the comments below and I'll try to help you out with it. As always, it's a lot easier to solve problems when you're actually with the person. So if you're interested in becoming a side mount diver in Komodo, then you can come join us for a paddy side mount course right here in the beautiful National Park. All of our important links are found in the description below. So that'll be the side mount course, um, our brand new t-shirts that we're selling in support of Plastic Free July, and all of our other social media channels. If you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. So when are you going to go side mount diving? I hope soon. Yeah? I, I'd love to go side mount diving with you. Komodo? Maybe? If not, you know, just like make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss our videos. And then check out one of these videos over here. Just click on one. I'll see you there. So, uh, uh, uh. if you have any questions about, oh, I didn't talk about the bungee. Ah! Blah, 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 blah. ah! Okay.